Hello everybody, we're going to look today at configuring OSPF V2. And usually this is describing what we're doing, so you'd read through that, your exam objectives, things you're covering there. Took about an hour. Here's our topology for the lab, NY Edge 1, NY Edge 2, NY WAN 1, NY Core 1, NY Core 2, NY Access 1, and then the PC, PC lab or P lab. All right, in this exercise, we'll configure a single OSPF area. You'll next learn to verify your OSPF configuration using relevant show commands. And after completing this exercise, we'll be able to enable OSPF. Now, OSPF is open shortest path first. Now, this should make sense because we've always heard the shortest distance between two points is a straight line and that's the goal of OSPF. Um, it's a dynamic routing protocol that allows changing to happen as things in the network update whereas static routing um, you would assign certain paths and that would just be it. There's no updating. It stays static or assigned. Okay, so we're down to task one, enabling OSPF. The lab devices are pre-configured with IP addressing scheme shown in the above diagram. So luckily all that's already done for us. We don't have to set those up. In this task, we're just going to configure OSPF for the single area, placing each of the subnets laid out in the diagram into this area. For clarity, the subnet to which each device is listed below. So we have Edge NY Edge 1 and 172.14.00 slash 24. And it has a 192.168.16.0 slash 24. NY Edge 2, same network as Edge 1. That's the connection between them. If you'll notice here, that's this connection. So those are both on the same network. Uh, 172.16.16.0 slash 24 and 192.168.16.0. So those are all three in common, and we'll look at that in a second. And the last one, 172.88.00 slash 30. All right, so let's go look and see the three that were in common. All right, so we're looking at these three devices and the connection that they're making to each other. I tried to do that with Edge 1, Edge 2, WAN 1. Okay, so we're looking at these three devices. So at some point, these all have to have a common address, um, network address, so that they can communicate. They know how to send information back and forth between the networks. Okay, so in step one, on New York Edge 1, we'll configure it first. So we'll click on it and make sure that's what's at the top of this window here before we get started. So then I'll click down here and hit enter. We're already at the user prompt, 
So to get into configuration mode, it's config. So somebody already typed enable, in other words. And then we'll do conf t or config t or configure terminal. And then router ospf1. All right, and now our prompt should look like this. That's what they're showing us. And we're on to step two. We're going to advertise the connected networks that are on NY Edge 1. And to do that, we'll use the following two commands under the OSPF configuration mode. To add both networks. Notice that you will add the area ID at the end of the address. Remember you're using the wildcard mask and not the subnet mask. And the wildcard mask is logically the opposite of the subnet mask. So we want to set up network 192.168.16.0 space and then the wildcard mask is 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255 and we're going to declare this area 0. And we hit the up arrow and then back. It's easier for me than retyping. If you want to retype, you can, but this one's network 172. And my wildcard mask is the same, and it is part of area 0. So 172.14.0.0, wildcard mask 0 0.0.0.255, and then our area is 0. Okay, we're going to type exit twice. First one gets us back to configuration mode. The second one gets us back to the user exec mode or privilege exec. That uh, yeah, privilege exec. I think. All right, and yeah, now we should be back at a prompt. And we're on to step three. We're going to confirm that it's running by doing a show IP protocols. And we should see here router OSPF1. No, nope, where am I looking? Routing protocol is OSPF1, router ID, number of areas 0, and then here's our routing for networks. The process ID is 1. We can see it's chosen a router ID here. And here were the two networks that we added. And the administrative distance is a default of 110. Okay. 
on to step four. Configure MY Edge 2 in the same way. However, this time specify the router ID to be its Gigabit Ethernet 01 IP address instead of its default. Instead of the default, it will choose. Use the same process ID as before. Okay, so we want to come to NY Edge 2, make sure it says that up here. Hit enter. Um, they did not type enable here for me, so I need to enable. Comp T or configure terminal. Router OS PF1. That's our process ID. Okay, and we're going to declare the router dash ID this time and set it to 172.14. Dot fourteen dot zero dot two, and we'll set up the network one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot sixteen dot zero space the wildcard mask of zero dot zero dot zero dot two fifty five space and this is area space zero then I want network it's messing with me network 172.14.0.0 wildcard mass 000.255 and we want this in area zero And again, I'll type exit and exit. And that's more or less what we should see there is what they're telling us. As you type, you will notice two syslog messages that appear that are similar to the following. And that's this message here. These two messages refer to the establishment of the OSPF adjacency on each of the interfaces of the router. Essentially, NY Edge 1 and NY Edge 2 now have neighbor adjacencies on both of their gigabit Ethernet interfaces. And we're on to step 5. So on NY Edge 2, we'll do Show IP OSPF Neighbor. And that should show us our two networks. All right, and then they want us to come to NY Edge 1 and do the same thing show IP OSPF neighbor. And notice the differences. Okay, step six. Finally, we're going to get over here and go to NYWAN one. Enable, Comp T, Router OSPF1, keep the process ID the same. And I'll set up the network 
72, 16, 16, 0 with a wild card mass 0, 0, 0, 0.255 and we're still in area 0. And I also want the network on 92, 168, 16, 0 with my wild card mass 0, 0, 0, 0 0.255 and again, area zero. I'll exit and get back to the privilege mode. Okay, and that's what we should look like at this point. You notice again this log message that it's loading. Okay, so now we're going to look at the routes on NYWAM1. So I'll do a show IP route. And that's your output and what it looks like. Looking for router tables, entries with O codes. O indicates a route that has been learned via OSPF. There is one such route, specifically the 172.14.00 network. Notice that there are two paths to that network. That's what we expected. We That's how we set it up with the other two routers, NYH1 and NYH2. Okay, so we're going to come back to NYH1 and look at its routes as well. So we'll do show IP route. And you can see the OSPF network here. One routes added the 172, that's for the WAN. Okay, now we're on to the second part of the exercise. In the previous exercise, we set up OSPF in a single area. And in this exercise, we're going to build on that by adding some passive interfaces, manipulating router IDs, and using subnet masks to advertise networks or routes. After completing the exercise, we'll be able to configure passive interfaces and manipulate router IDs. Okay, we're still using the same three interfaces, the NYH1 or devices, NYH1, NYH2, and NYWAN1. OSPF hello messages are sent out on all OSPF enabled interfaces by default. So as soon as you enable it, it turns on and says, hello, I'm out here. There may be an interface that you know does not connect to another router. Any OSPF hellos that are sent on this interface would not be useful. It's possible to deactivate these messages for such interfaces, thus reducing unnecessary traffic. In this task, task we're going to configure a passive interface on NYWAN1 so that it does not establish any adjacencies on its Gigabit01 interface. You will also configure a passive interface on NYH2 so that it does not form any adjacencies on G00. So let's look back at that. 
up here at the very top and look at why we're doing that so on NY WAN 1 it's using G0 but not it's G01 and here on NY Edge 2 it's using G0 well, both of them are using G0 0 but not using G01 Okay, it should be in there. There we go. Alright, so we're going to start on NYWAN 1. And enable COMP2 router OSPF1. And yes, we already set it up, but now we're going to change some of the configuration information. So it's like it's kind of like going into the interface. We've got to tell it what we're doing. So now it knows we're in that particular configuration. All right, and now we'll set up the passive dash interface. G01 exit exit and we didn't get any syslog information there because there's no adjacencies on that interface okay so next we're going to NY edge 2 Enable Comp T Router O S P F one Passive Dash Interface G zero zero. And we did get messages there. Process one from full to down, neighbor down, interface down. Okay, examine the adjacencies and routing tables of all devices and observe the following. So that was where you do your show IP routes and show um, neighbors or show OSPF neighbors. And we should see that the adjacencies have changed on all the routers. NYWAN 1 is no longer has an adjacency for NY Edge 2 and vice versa. Edge 1 still has an adjacency with Edge 2, but only on its G01 interface. The 172.16.16.0 network is still in the routing tables on Edge 1 and Edge 2. Ever notice the next top IP address? Compare this route on both of these routers. All right, so on NY Edge 1, and do an enable and show IP route. And same thing here, show IP route. And 
and we do the same thing on NYWAN1. And verify your information. And it's commonly recommended to have a router ID scheme for OSPF. By default, OSPF is assigned to the highest active IP address on the router as the router ID because interfaces can go down, router IDs may change, so it is always a good practice to explicitly assign router IDs. In this task, you'll configure an explicitly assigned router ID. Connect, we're going to click on NYWAN1. Go back into configuration mode. Go back into set up my OSPF route. And I'm going to set my, reset my time one router dash ID to one dash one dash one dash one exit exit and reload or use clear IP OSPF process command for this to take effect And before clearing the OSPF process, we're going to check the adjacencies on NY Edge 1 where there is still a relationship. So I'm going to go to NY Edge 1 and show IP OSPF neighbor. And the neighbor ID of NY Edge 1 has not changed. Or so now we're going to use the clear OSPF process. We're going to come to NY WAN 1. And on NY WAN 1, clear IP OS. PF process. Oops. Reset all and we'll type yes. All right, and now we get our syslog message. And we're going to come back to NY Edge 2, hit the up arrow. And now you can see the ID has changed and added the 111. The router ID of NYWAN1 has now been changed. And we're on to exercise three. Okay, in this next exercise, we're going to learn about different OSPF network types. We have point to point and broadcast, DR, BDR. The network type basically depends on the layer 2 technology that you use when you're connecting the devices. Ethernet creates point-to-point -point line. You will build on previous exercise configurations, but remove the gigabit Ethernet on NY Edge 2 router from being a passive interface. You will use the no passive interface command to achieve this. Okay, so on um, NYWAN1, 
enable CompT router OSPF one no passive dash interface G zero slash one exit exit now we'll re revert the changes done on NY Edge 2 in the previous exercise so we'll come back to NY Edge 2 enable comp T router OS PF1 no passive dash interface G zero zero exit exit So we're going to come back to NY Edge 1 and enable, and then you'll be able to show up the OSPF neighbor, not neighbot, neighbor. And we should see our interfaces all set up here. Okay, we're going to go back to NY Edge 2. Do the same thing. Show up the OSPF neighbor. And again, we should see the gigabit Ethernet interfaces restored. Note that the state column on NY Edge 1, you have the full BDR and full D, rather <laughs> DRO on NY Edge 2, and you have full DR on the other. Some adjacencies are established over Ethernet broadcast media routers. Choose DR and BDR designated router and backup designated router. Every router in the broadcast domain that is running OSPF will only establish adjacency with DR and BDR. Routers use multicast hello messages over a broadcast connection and discover OSPF neighbors automatically. During the discovery process, they choose DR and BDR based on the highest priority or the higher route ID. Routers that are neither DR or BDR are marked as Druther. Connect to NY Edge 1. And we'll do it. Show IP OS PF and G zero zero. And here we want to establish adjacency over the serial link or the point to point link. So on NY Edge one. Comp go into configuration mode and then go into the serial zero zero one interface okay and we'll issue a no shut command which tells it to come up 
Okay, and it tells me it goes up to down or down change state to down. And IP address All right, so now on NYH1, we'll enable OSPF, so router router OSPF1 network 10.10.1.1. Zero dot zero dot zero dot zero and area zero. And now we'll go to NY WAN one. B. And we're going to interface S010. And issue a no shut command. I want you to be able to see that whole message there. And then we'll set the IP address to Okay, so let's go back into OSPF, so router OSPF1, network 10.10.1.2, space 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, .0 space area 0. Exit, oops, I didn't get my exit in. Okay, so now we'll do our show IP OSPF neighbor. Notice that we now have a state that is full slash dash. Since the serial link is point-to-point -point type, there is no DR, BDR concept here. OSPF will form adjacency automatically with the neighbor on the other side. Okay, so on NYWAN1, now we're going to show IP OSPF and S0 slash 1 slash 0. Notice that the output has both point-to-point -point and broadcast types have the same hello and dead intervals.
right, back on WAN 1, or still on WAN 1, we're going back into configuration mode. Go to interface G00, IPOS, P network, question mark. Oh, because I missed the I and IP. It didn't like that at all. All right, so then it shows me broadcast, non broadcast, point to multi point, point to point. Okay, so we've set up OSPF in one area, and then we made additional OSPF configurations that expanded the area, and looked at different OSPF network types. Now we can enable OSPF, configure passive interfaces, manipulate router IDs, examine examine existing adjacencies and we can establish OSPF adjacency over a serial link. Hope that helped. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.